I said, praise the Lord. How many of you are ready for a new season of power? I pray it will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Now for those who are still outside, we are already starting and uh, those who are hanging around and talking, it's wonderful to meet our friends in a place like this, but this is an important moment for you to log in and to connect to the power of God, and I pray that this power will work in every life in Jesus' name. We're going to have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of this moment and this hour. We're asking, O oh Lord, to send your mighty power upon all your children in Jesus' name. We pray that every mountain will move. All the sicknesses will vanish away. And all those strongholds, we're going to pull them down in Jesus' name. No impossibility in the midst of the children of God. And therefore, Lord, we pray that at this time, it will be a moment of experiencing that new surge of power in every life in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. And I'll be reading from verse 7. Then I'll jump down to verse 12 and then to verse 22. Let's look at Exodus chapter 12. The children of Israel had been in Egypt for a long time. And now it was time for them to be delivered out of that Egyptian bondage. And the Lord was going to manifest his power in an unprecedented manner. Just like I believe that tonight, the Lord is going to manifest his power in a way you have never seen your very life in Jesus' name. And so, they needed a foundation. They needed a, a, a way of knowing that here is God, and God is going to do what they had never seen, what they had never known. Something new was going to happen to them. And that manifestation of power was going to be the beginning of great series of power in their lives, and it will be so with you also in Jesus' name. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12, and we're looking at verse 7. It says in verse 7, and they shall take of the blood and strike each on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Now this shows us the, the foundation of the manifestation of power. Many people do not understand how we come to connect with the power of God. They seek, if I, you know, pray, if I do this, if I do that, then I will be able to have the power of God in my life. It begins with the blood of the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Without that initial foundation of Jesus Christ coming and then taking away all the sins of the world, are you experiencing that in a very definite way, a moment of conversion, a moment of salvation, a moment of forgiveness, a moment when the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart, you are not the old boy, the old girl, the old man, the old woman, you used to be. A new thing has happened, and this is what was going to happen to the children of Israel. They had been in Egypt for a long time and then all this battle had been on and the Lord had sent Moses to Pharaoh let my people go and they were still there. One miracle took place, there was still another miracle, they were still there. Miracles upon miracles upon miracles. As we count those miracles in the land of Egypt, nine miracles have taken place already and they were still in the land. And so it's not just a matter of, I got this, I got this, I got this, without this definite step now that will get them out of the land of Egypt. The purpose of God will not have been fulfilled in their lives. And eventually now God said, this is the day. And I want to say to you, this is the day. The hour had come for them, but they had something to do, just like you have something also to do. Look at verse 12 now. That's Exodus chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 12. It says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. This night. That means there is no delay anymore. It is this moment, it is this day, it is this night. And the Lord said, I will. And you want to notice that in the in Exodus in particular, the Lord said quite a lot of things. He said, Number one, I will. Number two, he said, I am. Number three, he said, I will do. He's about to do a great thing. And it begins by saying, This is who I am, the omnipotent one saying, I will. 
and the Almighty saying, I will. The one, the irresistible one, the unstoppable one is saying, I will. And the Lord is going to do something. He comes to your life tonight and he says, I will. He will do it. I said he will do it. And whatever he has promised that he will do, he will definitely do. And there will be no failure on the side of the Almighty God. In Jesus' name, he said, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And then he said, I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I exercise judgment I am the Lord. He said, I will. Then he said, I am the Lord. Then he said, he gave the reason why he was going to do what he was going to do. He said, I'm going to exercise power, authority over all the idols and all the gods of Egypt. You see, when you have a God in your life, apart from the living God, you have an idol, a small God there that are worshipping. You know, the, the illiterate people, they worship gods of idols gods of stone and gods of wood and gods of iron. But, you know, the educated people, they worship another kind of God. Whatever we exalt above God, education is God for some people. Self is God for some people. And beauty is, is God for some people. Intelligence is God for some people. And God said, I'm going to manifest my power against all those gods that are trying to compete with me. And if there's any God in your life, I pray they come down today in Jesus name until Christ becomes the all in all until he alone will reign in your life it will reign and rule in your life in Jesus name and so he said I'm going to do this and I'm going to manifest my power in every family in Egypt I'm going to take away the firstborn actually the thought of the firstborn as the excellence of their might and power as they, they understood to be that that one is the next next one to the one that will rule. It's like they were replacing God with that firstborn to And God said, I'm going to bring my judgment upon all of them. Look at verse 13. It says, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Do you understand that today is not your intelligence, it's not your wisdom, it's not your self-righteousness, it's not your so-called morality, it's not your external behavior, it is the blood, the blood of the land. He said, when I see the blood, look at this now in verse 13, and it says, and when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, people are coming to God, they present religion, they say, God, look at my religion. I've always been in church, you know, and look at my righteousness. I've always done the right thing, you know, and look at my Bible knowledge, and all that will not avail much until you begin at the very foundation. It is when I see the blood, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He it says, it's going to make a difference between us and the people of the world, that difference will make in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on the supernatural power in the blood of Jesus. The supernatural power in the blood of Jesus. When we say supernatural, that means it's beyond the natural. It's above the natural. It's way, way ahead of the natural. This is not something you can, you know, put this and this together. I thought I knew that will happen. That's natural. I, I already imagined that this will happen because it happened before. If it's historical, that's still natural. If it's, uh, you know, kind of circumstantial. That is natural. But something beyond nature, something beyond your understanding, something beyond your grasp, and that supernatural thing that will blow your understanding away is happening tonight. Because there is power in the blood, supernatural power in the blood of the Lamb. It will work in your spirit, it will work in your soul, it will work in your body, work in your brain, work everywhere. And when it begins to work, you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. You live on seeing differently and you look differently. Everything becomes different to you when the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and all the consequences of sin, when it takes all that away, something new, something different will be manifested in your life in Jesus' name. Jump up now to verse 22. In verse 22, and ye shall take a bunch of Esau 
and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two posts and the two posts with the blood that is in the that is in the basin. Have you noticed that what, what God said? He said, You'll make you'll put the sign of the blood there. It means that you accept that the blood was shed for you. It, it's a personal thing. This is a personal kind of appropriation of what Christ does or the what he has done on the cross of Calvary. He said, You'll put the blood there on top to show that whatever is above, the blood will take care of that. And then you put the blood on two sides was that whatever is coming horizontally is coming from the right or the left or is coming from the back or the front whatever is coming from this world the blood of Jesus will take care it will take care in Jesus name whatever coming from the sky from the blue whatever when you have faith in the blood of Jesus you are going to discover tonight all those things are taking off in Jesus name now, do you see that he didn't say that you will put the blood also on the ground, only on the lintel at the top and then on the two side posts? Never, not on the ground. Why? Because they were not supposed to trample on, on the blood. They were not supposed to trample on the sacrifice. And we're not supposed to trample on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're supposed to honor him and reverence him and respect him and exalt him and be humble before him. We're not to walk over him. There are some people you know the way they treat uh, God is the way they treat their Bible. They can put the Bible on the ground or if you see any of the, any person's Bible on the ground they can walk over it but we can't do that. We can't. There must be that respect for the name of the Lord, for the word of the Lord, for the blood of the Lamb for anything that represents God. That's why I said this is where you put the blood and then it says in verse 23 now for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. If you're an Egyptian tonight, if you're of the world tonight, it is a day of smiting coming, a day of judgment coming, except you come out of that, it says, be ye separate, and then you'll be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. But if you remain an Egyptian, a carnal person, a sinful person, a defiled person, a lawless person, a smiting is coming one day, and I pray that you'll escape before that smiting comes in Jesus' name. It will come upon all the Egyptians in all their households, but only the people that have applied the blood of the Lamb by faith, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, their sins are forgiven. The Spirit of God is bearing witness in their hearts. The children of God, you will escape the judgment of God in Jesus' name. And then he goes on to say, in that verse 23, for the Lord will pass through the land will sm to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the side post, the Lord will pass over the door and will not, uh, will, 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 not uh, spoil, will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto, unto your houses to smite you. And so we, we find that illustration now of the blood of the Lamb. And it says, when I say the blood, I'm going to pass over you. Let, let's turn to the New Testament to see the interpretation of that. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 14. It tells us that Jesus Christ is represented by that lamb that was slain, whose blood was shed, who died, and tasted death for those people of the children of Israel. And if you believe that, that Jesus Christ actually did it for you, that's how the judgment of God will pass over you. That's how the forgiveness of the Lord will come to you. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. In verse 14 it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, he also himself, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and died for me, who died for everyone, who shared his blood, that the same power in the blood of the Lamb in the Old Testament, that same power will be manifested in your life when you believe in that blood that was shed for you. And he said that he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might, tell me the next word there, tell me out loud, he might destroy him that had the power of 
death, that he is the devil, that he is now because of that sacrifice that he made on the cross of Calvary and he died for you. He said because of that shed blood, he has the power to destroy him that has the, that has the power of death, even the devil. And that power you like recognize and experience in your life tonight in Jesus' name. I thought you would say amen to that. We're looking at three things, three things. What's the subject I'm talking about? The supernatural power in the blood of Jesus. The supernatural power in the blood of Jesus. Now we're looking at one, number one, the surpassing power of his blood. The surpassing power of his blood. That is, it's, it goes beyond anything you can do for yourself. It goes beyond anything an adult can do for you. It goes beyond what religion can do for you because it is surpassing. It is the surpassing power of, of, of his blood. Number two, the superlative power of his blood. Superlative, that means it's, when we say something is great, superlative means it's greater. When you say something is good, superlative means there's something better still. When you say something is is pure, there's something superlative, it's purer. Something that goes beyond the original thing that you have got. If you've got salvation, thank God for that salvation. There's something higher than that. If you've got holiness, sanctification, praise the Lord. There's something higher than that. If you have been baptized and the Holy Ghost has supernatural power that is superlative, that is higher than that. If you have got healing, praise the Lord. There's something higher than that. If you've got deliverance, praise the Lord. There's something great greater than that, the superlative power of his blood. Now, number three, number one is surpassing power. Number two is the superlative power. Number three is the supernatural power of his blood. The supernatural power of his blood is happening tonight. I said it's happening tonight. Are you there with your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body, your intelligence, everything you've got, the totality of the man saying tonight, I want this blood to walk through and through every part of my life. It will walk in Jesus' name. I'm coming to number one now is the surpassing power of his blood. The surpassing power of his blood. We've seen what happened in the Old Testament. Now we come to see what happens in the New Testament. We've seen what happened for the, for the people of the other generation. We want to see what happens now to the people of this generation. We'll see what happened to the people of the Old Dispensation. That is in the old covenant. Want to see what happens to the people of this dispensation, the people of the new covenant. The Lord Jesus Christ himself tells us, he tells us in uh, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. Matthew chapter 26 and in verse 28. He tells us in verse 22, verse 20, uh, chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood. Think about that. For this is my blood. The Lord Jesus Christ was saying, don't look to the temple anymore. This is the blood. Don't look to the sanctuary of the old covenant anymore. This is the blood. And don't look to the old people, old sacrifices, old religion, traditional religion. It says, this is the blood. It's my blood of the new covenant of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of of sins for the remission of sins what does that mean removal of sin forgiveness of sin it means the total taking away of the sin you see the old testament people the sins were covered for a moment it that's all they had when they made all those sacrifices, they make the sacrifice now and their sins were covered. That's why David said, blessed is the man whose sin is covered from the sight of the Lord. But they were waiting for the time when something surpassing to that, something greater than that will happen. That God will not just cover up your sin, he'll take everything away. That's what he means by the remission of sin. And the moment you come to put your trust in Christ, and you put your faith in Christ. You put your confidence in Christ. You say, he died for me. He went to the cross for me. 
He paid the total price for me, for my salvation. He's done it all. There is nothing else for me to do. And the moment, if I believe at this very moment, all the sins I ever committed, the small and the great, the big and the small, and the visible and the unknown and everything will be totally taken away. That's why it says, this is my blood of the new covenant, the new testament, which is shed for many. Thank God you can be part of that many. I said you can be part of that many. You don't have to say, I don't know whether I'm there or not. Of course you are there. He tasted death for every man. He did this for you. And because he did it for you, all you need to do is just say, Lord, I believe. I thank you. And that moment when you believe, all your sins are taken away in Jesus' name. It tells us in, uh, come back to Leviticus chapter, Leviticus chapter 17. Leviticus 17 verse 11. It gives us here even from the old covenant, the old testament Testament, he gives us a great, great principle that many religious people today, they are not looking at. Even those who say they are gospel people, they don't understand the gospel, they say they believe. They do not understand that we start at the point of the shedding of the blood of Christ. That that is a means of our salvation, the means of our propitiation, the means of the, of the taking away of our sin, and the means of the atonement in, in this uh, Leviticus chapter 17. Now we're looking at verse 11. Leviticus, you, you even need to mark this in your Bible, so important. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your, for your souls. Look at this. For it is the blood, not your morals. It is the blood, not your self-righteousness. It is the blood, not the name of your denomination, your church. It is the blood. It is not what you say, I did this by myself. Look, look at how clever I am. It is not your service. It is not what you do for God. It is what God has done for you to start with. It says in that verse 11, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It is the blood. If you have not believed on the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away and cleanses and takes away all the sins you have ever committed, you have not started yet. All you have is dry religion. All all you have is a worthless religion that does not amount to anything in the sight of the Lord. And so the Lord says, there it is, the blood that makes atonement for sin. Let's come to the New Testament now in Romans chapter 3. In Romans chapter 3, it still tells us about this surpassing power of the blood of Jesus. And that's where you start. And I pray that if you have not started, you'll start there tonight in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter 3, chapter 3 of Romans verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. Sometimes you are talking to somebody and then you say, hey, do you believe you're a sinner? You say, that's, that's news to me and that's bad news. I don't uh, think I am. He says, but I'm like this, I'm like this, I'm like that. How can you still say I'm a sinner? You see, if you fall short of the character of God, then you're a sinner. If you fall short of uh, the expectation of God, internal expectation, trans, they are not as transparent as they want you to be, as honest as they want you to be, as faithful as they want you to be, as uh, righteous as they want you to be, you fall short of the glory, you fall short of the grace, you fall short of the character, you fall short of the very nature of God. That falling short, no matter how short, it will be short or wide. There's a wide gap between you and the almighty God that's the sinner right there. But thank God, look at verse 25. But so it says in verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now he tells us, being justified. What's the next word there? Tell me out loud. Freely. Being justified freely. Because Jesus paid it all. He paid the price for your salvation. He paid the price for your justification. That's why it says, I'm being, I'm being justified freely. By his grace, through the, through the, uh, for the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, 25, very important, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that is a cleansing, a covering, a taking away, through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood, through faith in his blood. It is that blood of Jesus Christ. You have faith in that blood, you say, Father, 
I know that all I am does not matter in your sight. I'm just a dirty, defiled rag in your sight. The best I can do will fall short of even the glory of angels. The best I can do will fall short of the glory of the character of a person like Enoch. The best I can do by myself, in my own strength, will fall short of the glory of the saints I find in the Bible. Not to talk of falling short of the glory of God. Therefore, I come only on the merit of the blood of Jesus. And because you come in the merit of that blood of Jesus, he says, that's what I'm looking for. If you're not coming your merit, that's why it says in verse 25, he says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the removal, for the pardon, for the forgiveness of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. It is through the blood. And I pray that that blood will work effectually, effectively in every heart here tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm asking somebody there and I say, are you born again? You say, I'm not born again yet. I say, what are you waiting for? I'm waiting, you see, I'm so dirty, I'm so sinful, I'm so terrible. I want to turn over a new leaf. I want to do part of the work for God. I want to make it easier for God to save me. I want to, uh, you know, purge this and take away this and do this. I said, if you save yourself already, God has no job to do saving you. He wants you to come just as you are. He said, why were we yet sinners? Christ died for the ungodly. Then he says in verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood. Not by turning over a new leaf. We're justified by his blood. We're saved by his blood. We're forgiven by his blood. Our names get into the book of life by his blood. He says we shall be saved from the wrath, from wrath through him. That means then that we are now the people of God because we are purchased by that blood. In fact, when we say church, Many people still, uh, it, that, that's a word that people use wrongly. And I found the people, and I say, um, you know, where are you going? They say, I'm going to church. I'm going to church. What they mean is they're going to a building, a building that is set apart for worship. That's not church. They look at the church now. It says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Uh, you know, some people, uh, the way they think I'm going to church means that God is there and I'm going to meet God there. And when they come out of that building, I've come out of the church and now I can be whatever I want to be. I can do whatever I want to do because I'm not in church. They don't understand church. Look at church. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 28, chapter 20. 20 verse 28, we're looking at the importance of the blood, the efficacy of the blood, and the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, the surpassing power of his blood. We're looking at uh, chapter 20 of Acts, uh, which verse, give it to me out loud, 28, it says, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, and uh, to feed the church, listen to this, to feed the church, which he has, tell me, purchased with his own blood. The people who are purchased with his own blood, with the blood of Jesus, that's the church. That's the church. It's not the building. The building is good. That's where the church actually gathers together. And then those who have been born again, those who have been saved, those who have been forgiven, those who sins have been taken away because of their faith in the blood of the Lamb. Because of their faith, I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that he took all my sins away on the cross of Calvary. I believe I will not come to judgment again because he, Christ, died for me. It's an acceptable, it's the acceptable sacrifice. It's the perfect sacrifice. That's the one that the father said, behold, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And the moment you put your faith in that blood tonight, all your sins are gone in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now, which is the superlative power 
of his blood. The supernatural power of his blood. And what a wonderful thing to be born again. What a wonderful thing to be saved. But you see, there are people, that is their final destination. I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Final destination. Any other thing the blood of Jesus can do for you? I don't know about that. I know I'm saved. I know I'm born again. When are you going to step up and go on to the superlative power in the blood of Jesus? And we're looking at 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 1 John chapter 1. And we're coming to verse 7 here. It's telling us that whatever you've got through the blood, you've got salvation, there is more. Whatever you've got, you've got forgiveness of sin, there is more. Whatever you've got, you've got assurance that my sins are forgiven. I am a child of God. There is still more. Your sins have been pardoned. Your sins have been forgiven. The past is gone. How about the future? How do you live in the future? With what power do you live in the future? And with what assurance and confidence and backbone, spiritual backbone, strong, stable, solid backbone, do you live now? We're looking at First John chapter 1 verse 7. In First John chapter 1 verse 7, for, but if we walk in the light, those are born again people, they're not walking in darkness anymore, they walk in the light. As he is in the light, that he said their concern is, if Mary is doing it, I can do it. If that's um, permissible in uh, Stephen, then I think I can do that. No, we're we'll walking the light as he is in the light. I saw brother so and so, and you know, if they say this thing is wrong and he is doing it, of course, if brother so and so is permitted to do it, then I can do it too. If we walk in the light, not as David is walking in the light, not as Stephen is walking in the light, not as Mary or Josephine is walking in the light, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, there are even some people that, you know, they will give this uh, kind of excuse. You know, uh, I, I live very close to our local church pastor, and I know how he talks, and I know what he does, and if our local church pastor can be doing that, of course, that means I can do it too. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, I hear that, uh, you know, the so-and-so uh, in uh, level three or level whatever is, um, you know, a daughter to uh, an overseer. And if the daughter of the overseer is living like that, that means the night too I can live like that. If we walk in the light, tell me as as he is in the light. You see all those excuses, they are excuses for failure. Excuses for sinning. Well, why don't you say that, you know, if, uh, you know, the daughter of, uh, you know, an overseer is uh, making a grade uh, C or D or whatever, then I think that's good enough for me. No, you still want your A. You want your A minus or your A plus. You say that that's, that, that's her own or that's his own. I want something higher than that. And that higher thing the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. You see, why do people aspire to be good and better and high and higher and great and great? in material things. When it comes to spiritual things, at the time they go to the level of the lowest people. When it comes to righteousness, it comes to living right and living the righteous life, that's when they go to the lowest level and then they excuse themselves. But you're not going to excuse sin in your life anymore. You're not going to excuse failure in your life anymore in Jesus' name. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then he says we have fellowship with one another and the blood, everybody say the blood. That is and the blood of Jesus Christ is some cleanses us from, tell me, tell me out loud, tell me once again. From all sin, you come to that position where your sins have been forgiven. That's the past. Now, for the present day that you are living, there is a cleansing from all sin. This is the one inside that I may not see, that your friend may not see, that your neighbors may not see. The one that is even inside, already the outside sin, the external sin in salvation, all that is taken away. But now we're walking in the light because we're saved. We're walking as Jesus because we're saved. Extra 
internally were saying in any situation, any circumstance, what would Jesus do? That's what I want to do. How will Jesus live? That's what I want to live. How will Jesus walk? That's what I want to walk. And where will Jesus go? That's where I want to go. Where will Jesus not go? I don't want to go there. What will Jesus not say? I don't want to say that because I want to walk in the light as he is in the light. On the point of the fact that I'm born again, I'm saved. But now it says, while we're walking in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. This superlative sin, the Lord will do it for you. Look, look at First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. In First Peter chapter one, I'm reading from verse from verse thirteen. Let, let, let's go to verse thirteen of First Peter chapter. Wherefore, get up your lo the loins of your mind. It's like you know some people. The, the their mind is so flabby. And they have wandering thoughts. And while they come to the presence of God, their mind is wandering this way and that way and that way and that way. While they are praying, their mind is just scattered all about. And the apostles gather everything up, buckle up, and belt up so that all your thoughts will come to this central thing that you have focused on the Lord. It says, wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Then it goes on to say, and be sober not frivolous. You found that some people, many people call themselves uh, Christians nowadays. Uh, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, the drunkard says he's a Christian. The homosexual says he's a Christian. The thief says he's a Christian. The carnal says he's a Christian. The worldly says uh, everybody appears to be a Christian, but not the Bible kind of Christianity. It says be sober. Not frivolous, not careless, not the one that is, you know, playing and throwing lies and deception all around and is still saying I'm a Christian. Be sober, he says, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then as what kind of children? Tell me out loud. I can't hear you. As obedient children, that's the kind of children God has, the one who's preparing for heaven. You know, sinful children, uh-uh. Disobedient children, no. Rebellious children, no. You know, there are some people, they, they, they take a pleasure in evil. They say, I want to tell you that I'm a child of God. I mean, I know I'm a child of God. You may not believe it, but I know, I know I'm a child of God. But you know, I, I don't take a, you know, just anything you read in the Bible, although I'm a child of God, I still like to go my own way. I'm one of those, uh, you know, difficult children of God. You think you're a child of God? I'm one of those rebellious rebellious children of God. You think you're a child of God. I'm one of those disobedient, unfaithful, disloyal children of God. I don't know about that, but as obedient children, he says, not fashioning yourselves according to your former manners in your ignorance. It says you are ignorant when you are doing that. When you are disobedient and rebellious, you are ignorant. It says you did that in your former life before you met the Lord Jesus, before the blood of Jesus who washed you and cleansed you and made you a new creature in Christ. But now he says, because there's something that has happened to you, there's something new here. Then he says, but I see which has called you is, what's the next word there? Holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That means holiness affects every area of your life. Going to class and writing your exam and, and you know, preparing yourself and interacting with people. The boys and the girls. The girls and the boys. The young men and the young men. The lecturers and the students. Holiness affects every relationship in all manner of conversation. And it said, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. It also says, be ye holy Holy because you are members of deeper life. Uh -uh. You know, some people say, I can't do that, I'm deeper life. What if you are not in deeper life? Then you'll do it. I can't do that because, you know, we're going for a special, if special meeting. So if you're not going for that special meeting, you would have done that thing. I can't do that now because, you know, lecturer so-and-so is, you know, our, you know, school or college, uh, whatever, uh, coordinator, whatever, and therefore I can't do it. So if he wasn't there, then you'll do it. I can't do that because, you know, Madam so-and-so, sister so-and-so is around. So if she were not there, then you would have done it. Be ye holy for I am holy. The 
reason he calls us to holiness is because we're related to him. Because we're children of God, we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity because we, we name his name. And because we claim to belong to him, that's the reason for the holiness. It's not because, you know, because I'm in deep life, because I'm Pentecostal, because I'm this, because I'm that. Because if so and so hears that I do something like this, it will shock him. No, it's not because of the shock. It's because here you say you claim to be of the Lord. Be holy for I am holy. I pray that this concept will be reaching on the table of our heart in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say in that heaven, that verse 17, and if he call on the Father who without, who without respect of persons, that means uh, when God is going to judge, is not going to say, well, uh, so and so is uh, Pastor uh, Kumuyi's daughter. Because of that, I think I'll have to give you a pass mark. How, 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 what will it sound to hear that, you know, uh, Pastor Kumuyi's daughter does not uh, make it okay. I pass you on because you are so and so. God is no respecter of persons. He applies the same, the same standard to everybody and he wants everybody cleansed in the blood of the Lamb and he'll do it for you in Jesus' name. And then when he does that, then you are living the life he wants you to live and you are able to say praise the Lord I'm not great cash into the kingdom of God I'm there because I believe I'm there because the blood of Jesus has done something in my life then it goes to say according to every man's work then it says pass the time of so sojourning here in fear that means you honor God you turn before God for as much as she know that she was not redeemed from corruptible things a silver and gold from your vain conversation to uh, received by the tradition of your fathers. Then it says, but for the precious blood of Christ. The precious blood of Christ. He gave his blood for you. Then he said, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And I pray that the Lord himself will open your eyes to see the great things, the blood of the Lamb has accomplished in your life in Jesus' name. If you have not gone home, give me a good amen there. Yeah. Looking at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, the blood, the superlative power in the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, superlative power. A power that goes beyond what you got originally. You were saved originally. There's something greater than that that is called sanctification. That is called holiness. That is called the purity of heart. And when you come for this second blessing in the blood of the Lamb, it cleanses you and purges you and purifies you. And things become superlative in your life in righteousness and holiness. He'll do it for you in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. With his own blood. Not with the blood of animals of the Old Testament anymore. Not with the blood of Stephen who died as a matter. Not the blood of any covenant that anybody is making in a foolish way somewhere. His own blood. The blood of Jesus. Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify, purify, cleanse. Take away that depravity that he might sanctify with his own blood. He suffered without the gate. Let us go therefore, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. Look at verse 20 now. The God of peace, I pray the peace of God will be in your life. And the God of peace will reign your life in Jesus' name. It says now the God of peace that brought again from the dead. Our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. You see, the, the blood is everywhere. Old Testament is there. New Testament is there. You come to Matthew. You open the pages of the New Testament. The blood is there for our salvation, for our sanctification, for all the provision we need from the kingdom of God. And as we go on to the book of Revelation, the blood is still there. And I pray that, you know, something that is like this all through the book will not be missing your life in Jesus' name. It says in verse 21, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. 
make you perfect to do his will. You see, uh, that means that the blood of Jesus come to, comes to subdue your will, comes to destroy your own will. And it says not, it is the will of God. Isn't that the Lord's prayer that thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven? It says walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever and the people of God said Amen. Amen. I come to point number three, the supernatural power of his blood. Number one is the surpassing power of his blood. The surpassing power of his blood. That the blood of Jesus does something for you, does something in you, does something through you. That your own effort, your own strength, your own religion, your own self-righteousness cannot do by yourself because it's surpassing. Number two is the superlative power of his blood, of the blood of Jesus. Number three now is the supernatural power power of his blood. Well, we're coming to this again in um, Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, we're reading those uh, verses we started with. Um, Exodus chapter 12, verses 12 and 13, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Do you know that the, the Egypt is a picture of the whole world? of the whole world, Africa, America, Europe, Asia, China, everywhere. And it says the blood of Jesus is so superlative and so great, it's so supernatural, it does what all the religions of the world cannot do. You see, there are people today, they call it a, the New Age movement. They take a little from Buddhism, a little from Hinduism, a little from this other religion, a little from all the, and put everything together, and it then sprinkle it with some ideas from the Bible they quote the Bible along and they say that this is the whole thing. No. There's a difference between what God did on that night of, pass of the Passover and what was happening in Egypt. This is supernatural. This is something that goes beyond the realm of nature and goes beyond the realm of the world over here. And I pray that this understanding the Lord will grant to every one of us in Jesus name. And then he goes on to say in verse 13 and the law and the blood shall be to you for a sign the blood shall be for you for a token and that's all the Lord will be looking for it's not looking for your name it's not looking for you know your parentage it's not looking for your tribe it's not not looking for your nationality it's not looking for educational status it's not looking for any other thing but the blood it says for if it shall be a token upon the houses where ye are and when I see the blood he already tells us what he wants to see. He says, if I see another thing, you'll be a judge. But when I see the blood, when I see the blood, let him see that blood that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that you believe his blood was shed for you. All the other things, whatever it is, will come later. But this number one singular solitary thing must be there. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let me show you in uh, Colossians chapter 1. And see what this blood does. How it transports us and translates us and transfers us out of where we were to where he wants us to be. And that transfer will take place tonight. That translation will take place tonight. Because it says over here, look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 1. We're looking at verse 12. It says, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us to be meet, uh, me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. The inheritance of the saints in light. It is through that blood that all the inheritance we need, the healing will come, the protection will come, the deliverance will come, the whatever it is, blessing we're looking for, spiritual, material, professional, academic, everything will come in Jesus' name. Verse 13, who has, who has delivered us from the power of darkness? It's through that blood delivered us from the power of darkness. You know, some people, they, they have a, I, I don't know why, they, you know, some of us uh, who think that we're intelligent. If you're intelligent and then you're doing something that is unwise, unintelligent, unscriptural, they take, um, you know, some people have written some things down in a particular book, and they call it, whether it's prayer book or prayer book of deliverance or whatever, and then they kneel down, and then they're repeating those things, they read all that, and they say, they read this, then this will happen, and then they go to another page, and read, they're reading prayers to God, 
<laughs> what a kind of prayer is that? You don't find that in the Old Testament or New Testament that you know you just you nail know, down there and then you are reading and then you go turn over. If uh, you dream like this, this is what you read. If you are experiencing failure, this is what you read. If there is generational cause, this is what you read. If there is this other thing, this is what you read. It's a waste of time. But look at what the Lord has done. It is as you believe in the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you. It says in this verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And I dare tell you tonight, as we come to be, I believe in the blood. I said I believe in the blood. And as we believe together tonight, all those things, it's deliverance, it's deliverance, total deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. And he has translated us. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Translation. What does that mean? When you translate something, well, even the ordinary, you know, those of us that in linguistics you translate from one language to the other. When you translate from this to this, it means you take it from this place, you take it to another place. But when Enoch was translated, it was translated from earth to heaven. It's a different realm. And what took place for him, made spiritually, is what's taking place for us. If you had been under the power of darkness, under the dominion of darkness, and all these uh, things walking about in your body and all that, once the Lord takes you away from there, translates you to another place, there's a transport there is a translation and all those things that bothered you in the past they are gone in Jesus name that's the translation the Lord is talking about and when that translation takes a place all those uh, walking in my head and walking in my brain and will not allow me to sleep will not allow me to study all that is broken tonight in Jesus name there is a supernatural power and it's through that blood of the lamb that the blood washes and cleanses and purifies and sanctifies and takes everything away and then it shows us that there's a translation from this realm to that I'm reading that verse 13 again. Who has delivered us? He has delivered us. Is that present tense or past tense? Tell me out loud. Past is done it already. I don't know why these people like they go to the valley, they go to you know another place, they go to another place, and they say, I'm going to pray somewhere. And we say, Can't you pray where you are? And they say this this one, this kind of prayer will require for me to go to that special place and all that. But he has done it already. What are you looking for? What you've got already? You've got it, you'll keep it in Jesus' name. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, and then he has translated us from the kingdom into the kingdom of his descent. Look at verse 14 and see how that happened. In whom we have, in whom we shall have, again, in whom we are going to have, what does it say? We have, I have it. I said I have it. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We have redemption through his blood. Thank God I have it. Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross. That is, everything that every cause reaching against you, nailed to the cross tonight. Every yoke nailed against you, nailed to the cross tonight. Everything, all those negative things, you know, people who do all this rigmarole and the spinning and the jumping and the walking and the running and the boxing and the gymnastics, when they are praying, they don't understand what they have. They think it's that sweating and the exercise and the shouting and the calling of this particular name and, you know, speaking a particular kind of thing. They think that is what gives them deliverance. They leave all the, the blood of Jesus aside. They don't know the power in the blood and they're struggling and sweating on their own. And next day, they're still going to do the same rigmarole and the following week they still go through go through that gymnastics in prayer and the following month they're still going to do the same thing and they're in the same spot at the marking time all the time but today a translation is coming for you that you just know that you know with beyond any shadow of doubt he has taken you out of this realm and then you are in that realm of freedom and liberty and dominion in Jesus name because it says in that it says in that verse 14 it says it's nailed to the cross it blot out the blotted 
out the unrighteous of ordinances against us. And then it says, having then having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I will triumph. I will overcome. Because it's done for us already in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Revelation. Revelation, from, I'm reading from chapter 12. Revelation 12. And we're looking at verse 11. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of them. Call him Satan, we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Call him demon, we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Call him, a, you know, a, an oppressor, we overcome him by the blood of them. Call him an intimidator, we overcome come him by the blood of the lamb call him whatever name whatever name mr terrible we overcome him by the by the blood of the lamb we overcome tonight in jesus name and when that overcoming power of the blood walks in your life nothing can bring you under its dominion anymore in jesus name Number one, the surpassing power. Number two, the superlative power. Number three, the supernatural power. Everything coming together, everything can be yours tonight. Why don't you rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe that this surpassing power of the blood of the Lamb will walk in my life tonight. You open your mouth and you'll pray. You know, there are people that, you know, they always say, saying, somebody will pray for me, somebody will pray for me, somebody will pray for me. Yes, somebody can pray for you but how about you praying how about you praying how about you telling the lord and say lord i believe i believe is the personal faith and the blood of the lamb is the personal faith and the blood of them the personal faith you exercise in the blood of the lamb that's what gets you over that's what gives you the forgiveness that's what gives you the assurance is mine is mine is mine i am saved i am saved you put all your sins wrap all your sins together bundle all your sins together together and say lord i transfer my sins unto the lord jesus christ he died for me he died for me this very moment i put my faith in christ it's not your religion it's not i was born in deeper life i was raised in deeper life i've been in this deeper life i don't know how many years now that's not it it's the blood of the lamb the blood of the lamb when i see the blood not when i see your membership in deeper life then i'll pass over you when i see the blood when i see the blood when i see the blood i will pass over you judgment will pass over you the wrath of god will pass over you when i see the blood when i see the blood when i see the blood let him see that you put your faith in the blood of jesus tonight in the blood of Jesus tonight because it has surpassing power the surpassing power in the blood the surpassing power in the blood the surpassing power in the blood in the blood of the lamb let him do it tonight and just say Lord I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe Jesus died for me even me Jesus died for me even me Jesus died for me me in particular he shed his blood. He shed his blood so that all my sins can be forgiven. Let that forgiveness be your experience tonight. Let that forgiveness be your experience tonight. Let that salvation, that redemption, let it be your experience tonight. And let the Spirit of God bear witness in your heart. You are born again. No more just religion, mere religion, superficial religion, dead religion, dirty religion hypocritical religion but now i'm born again his blood has washed me clean i put my faith in the blood of the lamb i put my faith in the blood of the lamb i put my faith in the blood of the lamb my faith i put in the blood of the lamb tell the lord right there tell the lord right there he saves he forgives he redeems and he gives assurance of salvation and when that happens you will know the spirit of god will bear witness in your heart you are a child of god transfer all those sins to him lay everything on the altar and say lord now i belong to you lord now i belong to you 
never to go back into those dirty things and never to go back to that dirty language and dirty appearance and dirty interaction and dirty habit and dirty lifestyle anymore. Lord, I belong to you now. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Because of the blood of the Lamb who died for me. Because of the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Then trust him. Trust him. To give you the power, the strength. To now walk in the light. As he is in the light. Stop following James or John. Stop following Mary or Martha. Follow Christ. Follow Christ. Live as he lived. Talk as he talked. Act as he would act. Behave as he will behave. Walk in the light. I see we're walking the light. And let your light so shine before men. The day will see your good works, your righteous behavior. And he'll glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let the superlative work, superlative power of the blood of the Lamb walk in your soul, in your spirit, in your life something new to take place internally something new to take place within the heavenly father will look at you and say that's my beloved child my beloved son daughter in whom i am well pleased what a glory that will be a glorious thing that will be new life, new heart, new behavior, sober, not frivolous, not careless, not worldly, not carnal, yielded and submissive to the Lord. Let the supernatural power in the blood of the Lamb walk in your life and transfer you out of the realm of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Let him break every yoke, destroy every work of the devil. That blood has not lost its power. Surpassing power the blood, the blood of the Lamb has not lost its power, superlative power. The blood, the blood of Jesus has not lost its power, supernatural power. Let it work unhindered, unrestrained, unlimited, unrestricted, Unfettered in your life. And believe. And believe. Talks by faith. And believe. Believe. In Jesus' name we pray. And the children of God said, Raise up your hand as we pray together. You're raising up your hand on whatever you have, you know, said before the Lord. You have claimed before the Lord. You have believed before the Lord. 
you have laid your hand upon in the word of God, either it's for salvation or for sanctification or for holiness or for steady, continuous, victorious, righteous lifestyle. Or it's for healing or for deliverance. You know, whatever it is, that's why you are raising up your hand. It will happen right now. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you are a faithful God. And we know what you are looking for is our faith in the blood of the Lamb. It's not faith in ourselves. It's not faith in our good works. It's not faith in our gentleness. It's not faith in our religiosity. It's faith in the blood of the Lamb. And we come to tell you right now, Lord, we express our faith. We confess our faith in the blood that Jesus shed for us in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, those who are placing their faith in Christ, their trust and confidence in Christ for salvation now, I pray that the assurance of that salvation will come to them in Jesus' name. And those who are putting their faith and trust and confidence in you in the blood of the Lamb for consistent Christian living, walking righteously, I pray the strength and the grace to live that righteous life consistently. Give to every one of us in Jesus' name. And those who are putting their faith here because they want to be sanctified, purified, made holy, made righteous within. Oh Lord, I pray that definite work of sanctification, do it for them right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, those who want healing, I pray that the power in the blood will take the sicknesses away in Jesus' name. Any pain, any infirmity, oh Lord, I pray that you take all those infirmities and afflictions away from their lives, from their bodies right now in Jesus' name. From the top of their head to the tip of their toe. I pray, Lord, your promise of healing, your promise of health, you fulfill in every life in Jesus' name. You also say by our faith and the blood of the Lamb, you transfer us, you translate us, you transport us out of the kingdom of darkness onto the kingdom of your dear son. It's not our sweating that will do that. It's not our shouting that will do that. It's not gymnastic in prayer. That will, it's simple faith in the blood of the Lamb. And I pray that that simple faith we exercise right now in the blood of the Lamb will transfer us out of the realm of darkness in Jesus' name. All the powers of Satan will break it right now. All the powers of evil spirit will break it right now. Any power of any foolish covenant made with the devil, I break it right now in Jesus' name. Set all your children free. And I pray in their soul, in their spirit, in their body, in their mind, in their brain, they'll be totally free in Jesus' name. You said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We have known the truth of the surpassing power of the blood of the Lamb. We have known the truth today of the superlative power in the blood of the Lamb. We have known the truth today of the supernatural power in the blood of the Lamb. And I pray that this truth we know will set everyone free and free indeed completely in Jesus' name. I pray that right now will never be the same as we were before in Jesus' name. Fulfill your promise in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Now you'll say, I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe in the surpassing power of the blood of the Lamb. I believe in the superlative power of the blood of the Lamb. I believe in the supernatural power of the blood of the Lamb. And it's working in my life. Praise the Lord and Amen. I believe, yes, Lord.